Time now for the Road to Victory presented by Enterprise. And let's head to Augusta National where Shane Bacon and Rick Gaiman are joining us here on HQ. Guys, let's talk about Tiger Woods playing through the paint at the Masters, seeking his sixth green jacket to try to tie Jack Nicklaus. It's interesting because everyone has a different view, whether they romanticize or nostalgic about Tiger or analytical and realistic about Woods. Rick, I'll start with you. Under what lens should we be watching Tiger Woods this week? Uh, yeah, Tommy, all of that, right? <laughs> I think I think that's the best part about this. You know, we, we get the opportunity to look at Tiger uh, romantically and think about the green jackets. We get to look through the lens of, hey, statistically, recently it hasn't been great, even if the sample size barely exists, right? He's only played... 25 holes of golf this year. He said in December that he wanted to play Shane uh, once a month. Uh, we are far, we're far from that right now. So for Tiger to get out here, uh, the good news is this is a place that requires a lot of course knowledge, a lot of course experience. He's probably two shots better than any, anybody else out here per round right here mentally. That's got to make up for the physical stuff because it just hasn't been good. Yeah, I mean, and the physical stuff obviously is, is the big issue here. And he talked a lot about it. He said because of certain things to his body, other things are now hurting. He says some days he wakes up and feels great. Some days he wakes up and doesn't feel so good. Earlier in the week, the forecast looked like it was going to be pro-Tiger. I mean, that was the nice part about looking at the forecast earlier in the week and last week. It looked like it was going to be warm, which plays into his hands. It looked like we weren't going to have delays. Unfortunately, on Thursday, it looks like we're going to have delays. We're going to have wind. We're going to have rain. That does not play into the hands of Tiger Woods. But again, as you said it, he steps on the tee probably two up on everybody because he knows the golf course so well. And if he does feel good waking up on Thursday and Friday, I could see him playing some solid golf. We just haven't seen him complete four rounds much lately. Right? We would certainly hope to see him on the weekend, guys. But of course, since winning the 2019 Masters, Tiger's only made it to the weekend four out of his last 10 majors due to health and, of course, performance. No performance issues for Scotty Scheffler, the overwhelming favorite to win his second Masters in the last three years. You know, I asked Rick about this earlier in the week, and Shane, I'm going to give you first word here. We know that Scheffler should be the favorite, but he is a massive favorite, according to odds makers with Rory McIlroy and John Rahm, far behind, tied for second here. In your opinion, is Scheffler rightfully a, a massive favorite coming into this tournament? I mean, absolutely. I mean, biggest favorite since 2013 at the Masters. I think when you look at the way Scotty Scheffler has played golf consistently, you look at some of the numbers. I wrote down on this sheet of paper what he's leading the PGA Tour in, and my fingers started to hurt, and my wrist started to hurt. That's how many things. I mean, you go through strokes gained approach and strokes gained tee to green, strokes gained total, birdies make, third round scoring, fourth round scoring, first round scoring, second round scoring. I mean, this dude is playing unbelievable golf. He's actually improved statistically since last Last year, I think when you look at the way Scotty has gone about his business, obviously changing putters and getting more comfortable on the greens, experience matters. He loves playing here. He's obviously won here. But, I mean, the way Scotty has gone about his business over the last month and a half, I don't see how he doesn't finish in the top five and contend on Sunday. You said consistent. That That's really the key. We have seen Rory McIlroy at times in the last year play to his A-plus game. We've seen John Rahm play to his A-plus game. Brooks Koepka, we've seen everybody play to their A-plus game. Scotty Scheffler plays to his B-plus game every single time. And his B-plus game is just about better than everybody else on the PGA Tour. What he does from tee to green is, is almost unfathomable, right? I've been exhausted trying to come up with new ways to describe how good he is. The only thing we can say is he's basically Tiger Woods at this point from, from tee to green. And uh, what I know about Scotty, I don't know if he's going to win. Four to one, it's outrageous. It's some of the shortest non-Tiger odds we've ever had at the Masters. I know he's going to be in the mix because of that consistency. He is going to give himself plenty of opportunities. He's going to be in the top 10. He's going to be in the mix on Sunday. If things fall his way, sure, another green jacket. And, and I feel like something we almost like misconceptualize about Augusta National is the greens. Considering how undulated the greens are, it actually levels the playing field in terms of putting. You think about the greens and what it asks here at Augusta National. You actually don't have to be a great putter to win here. You think about some of the champions over the years. Sergio Garcia, not a great putter. Adam Scott, not a great putter. Hideki, not a great putter. And obviously, Scotty has struggled in that department, but he's an incredible chipper and pitcher of the golf ball, and that is what plays at Augusta National. So I just feel like Scotty's going to show up and do Scotty things. He looks comfortable. He seems cool, calm, and collected, so I expect another Scotty great performance. Again, the gap between one and T2 is Scheffler 4-1, to one, and then you have Rory McIlroy and John Rahm roughly 11-1. to one. That is the gap in terms of the odds makers heading to the Masters. 
Scheffler in a groupie with Xander Shoffley and Rory McIlroy. You guys brought up the Northern Irishman. Shane, what has been Rory's approach so far this week as he tries to complete that career slam? Uh, avoid coming here, I think would be the easiest way to put it. Uh, he's behind us chipping right now. Uh, didn't get here until late Monday. Uh, basically decided to take a slightly different approach. You know, last week was the first top 10 Rory has had on the PGA Tour this season. The driving hasn't been as tight as we expect normally from Rory Mack, where the irons haven't been as tight either. So to me, it's a bit of a toss up with Rory. I don't know what to expect. We know he's got the talent, obviously Tiger mentioning, you know, Rory's going to win here at some point, but the game hasn't been what we've seen over the last two years from Rory Mack. Rory. That being said, his major performance has been extremely salty the last couple seasons. It's been unbelievable, and I'm, I'm growing more bullish on Rory as we go along here. I like the fact that I almost beat him here to Augusta National. That shouldn't happen. That shouldn't happen for you a guy flew different, though. To, for sure. Yeah, yeah, he flew not, into a different airport than you. Should not be the same for a guy trying to complete the career Grand Slam, but um, what I what I like about what he did not do last week is he didn't make a ton of big numbers. He did make he did make one double, but he, he led the field in, in bogeys. He only made three of them. He's put up a bunch of big numbers on the card. He's made a lot of silly mistakes in 20 24 and it's still been able to he's still been able to put together a bunch of top 25 finishes the seven and a half strokes he gained on approach last week was his best approach performance since the 2019 wells fargo championship so i think that he is very much dialed in on those second shots but this is not Shane, a question of rory mcelroy versus scotty scheffler or the field or augusta national this is rory mcelroy versus himself and whether he can get over this hump mentally and you mentioned the big numbers i mean that's been the big issue with rory this year he's made three more doubles this season than he made all of last season and we're barely into April. So avoiding the big numbers, this place creates big numbers. You miss it short on a dog leg. You can make a six or a seven pretty quickly. So that's something to watch with uh, one of the most popular players in the world. Rory McIlroy using San Antonio last week as a tune-up for Augusta National. If we get to the defending champ, John Rahm, Rick, I'll start with you in terms of the Spaniard here as he tries to go back to back. Is there enough live data or anything we can look to to determine what we can expect from John Rahm this week? Yeah, the the live strokes gained have hit have hit the market. They're they're very new, and there's a, kind of a lot of things you can you can look into. But John Rahm is still an elite driver of the golf ball. There's no doubt about that. Um, John Rahm has not played as much golf, I think, in 2024 as he would uh, as he would like. He would like to have played a lot more events. He's told us that himself. He says he misses Torrey Pines, he misses Phoenix, he misses playing and defending at places like Riviera. So I think John Rahm would like to be in more form coming in. There's also this weird thing, Shane, when you're the when you're the defending champion, you have to do the champion dinner you've all these other obligations playing golf and defending is not necessarily front of mind add in the live stuff it's 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 just a different feeling around John Rahm this week yeah but he's one of those guys that he shows up to Augusta National and he's got the game that really translates here I believe he's got four top nine finishes in his last five starts at the Masters he can pitch the golf ball as well as anybody in the world great hands I love this quote from Jose Maria Alfabal that he took into his first Masters he said keep it low it's almost like playing a Lynx golf course at Augusta and you'll see John do that a lot this week He'll take a 56 degree or a 52 degree and keep it low to the ground, hit those kind of little checkers to get close. So I expect a great John Rahm performance, despite the fact that we haven't seen as much John as we'd like to. Take a look at John Rahm and that magical year last year overtook Brooks Kepka in the final round. What about Kepka? I know health is usually a thing with him, although not to the degree of Tiger Woods, but how healthy do we think Kepka is this time around? Seems like he's dialed. Seems like health is not an issue. The one thing with Brooks is he hasn't played nearly as good as we've seen in past years coming in. Shot a couple 77s last week at Doral. Not what you'd expect from Brooks Koepka. Was tinkering with a couple of different putters as well. But again, as we know with Brooks Koepka, shows up at majors and he's a different dude. So it's a major championship. Brooks knows he needs this. It's like one step closer to completing a career Grand Slam. Again, how can you count out guys like Rahm and Brooks and, and, and Scotty Scheffler at this point? I, I try not to get in the hit heads of guys like Brooks Koepka who can flip a switch and show up at a major championship and just beat the beat the pulp out of everybody else but Shane's right like you know I think of Brooks as a an, an alpha dog a guy with all the confidence in the world and tinkering between putters a couple weeks before uh, the Masters does not instill a lot of confidence in me I'm certainly uh, sure it doesn't instill a lot of confidence in him but uh, the T to green numbers are are still astounding and he, that's the way he's gonna have to attack this golf course he's gonna have to figure out a way to putt to a zero and not give give up the the event in in that regard but uh, I'm not gonna doubt Brooks Kepka when when a major championship kicks off. I mean, he's a top 10 machine in major championships. Guys, what are realistic expectations for Victor Hovland? 
Do you want to start with Victor? Sure. I mean, he's he's, he's going through a lot, uh, and it's it's self-inflicted, if you want to put it that way. I mean, he's now through another swing coach. He's back with Dana Dahlquist after a short stint uh, there with Grant Waite. He is a very technical golfer, Shane. He, he talks a lot about constant improvement and trying to find that 1%. If you, if you see him on the range or talking with his instructors, there's a lot of technicality in the way that his body moves. I don't love that type of uh, deep dive into your golf swing as you're like grinding on the range at the Masters right. and the the around the green numbers have dropped back to uh, basically you know early 2023 rates. So there, there's a lot to worry about here for one of the best ball strikers in the world. It's really interesting. You you imagine you remember how well Victor Hovland played at the end of last year. He actually has been very open about dealing with swing issues. Then yes, he said the issue was he would miss it left. This is a guy that likes to come over the top and kind of hit that push cut. He said his miss was kind of a pull hook, which obviously doesn't play anywhere especially Augusta National, and he said that's been something he's been dealing with, but you mentioned it, the numbers, not so good. Strokes gained around the greens is brutal. Some of the stuff he normally dominates in has not been good this year. Just, uh, you know, he's hadn't finished in the top 10 on the PGA Tour. For Victor Hovland, you're kind of waiting for him to click in because he played so well last year, but he has just not been the Victor Hovland we've seen over the last couple and, seasons. And he has been capable of clicking it in. He doesn't play through bad stretches. He goes into the into the cave, and he tinkers around, and he figures it out that way, and we've seen him emerge and play great golf after that, so I don't think he has to play himself into majors, but He's the next factor this week. There's there's a chance he could win this golf tournament. There's a chance he misses the cut and we see him go home on Friday. Guys, great stuff. Shane Bacon and Rick Gaiman from Augusta National. Gentlemen, thank you. They'll be with us throughout the week. Ponchos, umbrellas, because that weather is coming on Thursday, Jenny. Mm. It's coming in crazy, too. Of all the days, it's supposed to be a, a beautiful week, except for Thursday. You can watch with Masters Live for exclusive coverage of Amen Corner. Holes 15 and 16 featured groups live on the CBS Sports app. CBS and Paramount Plus will have you covered on the weekend. And the First Cut podcast will have you covered as well. Daily previews and recaps. Scan that QR code. Rick and Kyle on location. Greg Ducharme, Mark Immelman, Patrick McDonald, and Joe Musso with the podcast. Make sure to follow them if you haven't already.